Keane from Beeston. Good morning. Good morning, Liz. You're a recovering alcoholic. I am indeed. This afternoon in Leeds, you're going to be talking to other problem drinkers, sharing your story with the support of Alcoholics Anonymous. That's Is that right. right? Quite a brave thing to do, that. How long have you been dry? Uh, I've been sober. I was nine years sober last Saturday, the 14th of November. Congratulations. Thank you. How hard has that been? Uh, to be honest with you, the hardest bit was admitting I had a problem and getting into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, and uh, but... You know, life problems. Life has life problems, but you know, I haven't chose to drink on those over the last nine years. I know that you have to admit you've got a problem. Yeah, that's right. Before you can control the drinking. At its worst, what were you on? Oh, it's it's, it's hard to say because you know, at my, at my at my very very worst, I was on. I was drinking from the moment I opened my eyes to the moment I passed out to the moment I came round again, and I was doing a couple of liters of vodka plus. Whatever else I could get my hands on. Did you reach a rock bottom that made you turn? I, I, I reached many a rock bottom and then found a trap door of that rock bottom and then found another rock bottom. I had several rock bottoms and the last rock bottom was not as severe as any of the others. What was it, can you tell me? It was just I'd come out of hospital after my third suicide attempt of that year um, and I poured myself a drink and I stood over the sink in my uh, emergency accommodation that I was living in at the time. And uh, I vomited into the sink, and when the third one came back up again, I just realised an overwhelming feeling came over me that I can't do this anymore. Enough's enough now, you know. And that was on the 13th of November 2006, and haven't had a drink of alcohol since. Congratulations. Uh, the AA have helped you, I know. Oh yeah. They. I mean, the first time you walked into that meeting, yeah. did you think, right, I can, I can do this? I can do this. Well, the, I, the, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, the first time I walked into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, I didn't have a choice. I had nowhere else to go. I'd, try, I'd, I'd outlived all welcomes everywhere with family, with friends. You know, and I don't blame anybody for my drinking. Nobody at all for my situation. It was all my own doing. You know, and and uh, an AA was there to, with an outstretched hand and, and a cup of tea, and somebody said to me, it will be okay. You need never drink again, somebody said to me. And that astounded me, because I had stopped drinking by then. I'd had six days off a of drink, but the um, it's a mental illness as well as a physical. You know, it's, it's difficult initially. Who are you talking to this afternoon? Is well, it... well, from this morning, we're starting at, half t- at 10.30 this morning at the Heart Centre in Headingley, and we're actually speaking to professionals and service users and services. That is, you know, we've got the police coming. We've got uh, Inspector Yvette Hamill come in and a few other people, you know, through contacts with my dad. And uh, and then we've got the army come in, El Ferreiro, Safa, Simon on the streets, Women's Aid, you know, uh, Forward, St. Anne's Detox, Samaritans, all these people that either come into contact with alcoholics or have a large employ of people because it's, it, 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 it's one in 13. Yeah. Uh, and it is hidden a lot of the time. Yeah. And sometimes I have a friend who's an alcoholic. Right. Uh, and he functions with it, but he won't admit it. Yeah. And I've had to walk away. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you now, it breaks my heart. Yeah. Tries, and it's not that he doesn't, but he tries. Yeah. But you've really got to have some strength to do it. Yeah. You? It's 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 hard. It's it's hard to try to, to try and express the the. It's it's when enough's enough. But the thing is that when you're an alcoholic, the abnormal is normal. The wrong is right. Everybody else is wrong. You're right. And, you know, I, I tended to um, subject people who tried to help me the worst. You know, because I, I didn't think I was doing anything. I didn't think there was anything wrong. I'm getting up at 5 a.m. to get a drink. I didn't think there was anything wrong. 20 minutes after finishing work in 2006, I got pulled for drink driving. I was five times over the drink driving limit. You know, I thought it would be a good idea to try and kill myself three times in one year because... That was the only solution because the drink was no longer working. When the drink no longer works, it's a frightening place to be. Enjoy today. We I will. hope people hear your message. And just finally, before I let you go, anyone living with an alcoholic, anyone who knows that they are one, yeah. what's your message? Message is, you know, anybody that's li- anybody that is, thinks they've got a drink problem or anybody that feels that they need to ask for help, ask for help. Don't be afraid. You know, ring. The AA helpline, 
Am I allowed to give the number out? We've got it here, so if anyone wants it, yeah. we'll pass it we have the, we have the, uh, Nobody writes it down. And yeah, I'm nobody writes it down. Yeah. So, All right. You know, ask for help. And anybody that lives with an alcoholic, you know, there, there is a sister fellowship that we have called Al Anon. You know, and people can go speak to them. You know, they're, they're very good. I've rung them. Yeah, they yeah. Are. Good luck today. Thank you. Dean's AA event is at the Heart Centre in Headingley, and that starts at half ten today. And he'll be talking about that. It takes some doing that turning your life round. Eight twenty nine. West Yorkshire Travel.